All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Sizzler Express. My name is Carl Shakur and I'll be a pilot for the next couple of hours. What we're doing now is just basically looking for somewhere where I can park this car so I can make this video. I just took, I looked at my calendar and realized that I hadn't posted a video in two months. Something like two months. Two months ago. And it's like, that's, that's unacceptable. Can't be doing that. So I'm just gonna try and pull up at a, I'm behind a Home Depot somewhere in New England. Today, we're gonna be talking about how to take Milky Way photos. So I'm super excited. Let's get into it. There's three things you need to know about star photography, the when, the where, and the how. Okay, so firstly, we're gonna attack the when of taking the photos. If you, if you went out right now, I don't know what today's date is, but if you went out right now, as soon as the light went down and you tried to take photos of, this, of, the, of the stars, it'd probably be a bad idea because the moon's gonna be fat in the sky, shining down all that you know moonlight into the atmosphere and it'll be hard for you to kind of pick up the stars when the you know, light pollution from the moon is like distracted. Basically, light pollution is your absolute worst enemy when it comes to this. You wanna be in a dark environment, as dark as possible, you know, with the skies as clear as possible to, in order to pick up the stars as sharply as possible. So if you wanna get these photos, you have to make sure that there's absolutely no moon. And you'd be asking yourself, Carl, like, you know, I can't necessarily just turn off the moon. But luckily, the moon goes through phases every month from when it's a fat moon and it scrubs down to when it's a tiny little sliver. What you wanna do is you wanna plan your trips as close as possible to this sliver because that's when the light from the moon is very dim and very low and then you can also have a fun time shooting and the light is not gonna distract, you know, it's not gonna blow out your photo. So, if you have the time, if you, if you can time it properly, shoot as close as possible to the new moon. If you can't necessarily do this, you can, just, you can just wait until the moon sets and you'll have a couple of hours in the night sky to be able to shoot the stars when the moon is gone. Okay, so that's the when. Where do I take star photos? Unfortunately, you can't just step out. If I, I, I'm guessing you live in a big city, maybe like New York, or maybe even a smaller city like Manhattan, Kansas. You can't necessarily just step out of your front door, set up your tripod, point your, point your camera up to the sky and hope to get photos because cities glow and emanate light, you know? I'm a little thirsty. So cities create this glow, this light pollution that distract you from being able to see the stars as bright as possible. For light pollution from cities, you're gonna have to do a little bit of driving, driving away from the nearest cities, maybe into a national park, into a, into a dark area, so that you can you know, avoid the light pollution that is, that's glowing from the city. Uh, now, to avoid the mistake of just driving aimlessly, trying to find a dark spot, I can hit you up with a, a link to a map. This kind of map is called a dark sky map, and it's very useful for planning trips. If you're planning an astrophotography trip and you want to make sure that you're hitting locations that are in the sky. Sometimes you want to photograph a mountain and it's very beautiful and then you realize it's directly underneath the city. Uh, the best way to find mountains or locations that are good for you know taking photographs in the night is to use this dark sky map. This will show you where the darkest spots are and your photos are going to come out as stunning as possible. So that's good. Okay, so this is the how. So you found your dark spot, you've, you've, you're away from the city, you've planted a cry, like according to the moon, and you get to the spot. I imagine you'll want to see the stars with your, with your eyes, you know. You're gonna have to take a couple of steps in order to see this, these stars as bright as possible. Firstly, what you're gonna do is you're gonna turn off all the lights in the general vicinity. You gotta turn off your flashlight, turn off your car light, turn off all the lights in the general vicinity. Make sure it's nice and dark. Then you're gonna lay down on your back, looking up towards the sky, making sure all the lights are off, make sure you're not on your phone. There's no light pollution coming from any single thing. This is just if you wanna see it with your bare eyes. And then you're gonna wait a couple of minutes, maybe five minutes or 10 minutes, just watching the skies above you. And then slowly, like the stars are gonna be so vivid and so bright. It's, it's a beautiful thing. This is what I like to do every, every single time before I start shooting. I just take a couple of seconds to chill out, you know, look up at the night sky, let my eyes adjust, and then enjoy the night show for what it is before I start shooting. Okay, so we're done experiencing the night sky. It's time to capture the photos. Here's the gear that you'll need. This set of gear is what I usually take to all my night sky shooting sessions. I, I take a camera, I take a tripod, a headlamp, a shutter release or a remote trigger, and a sky tracker app. You need a good strong camera, something that can handle the high ISO levels that you're gonna 
forced onto your camera in order to get those night skies as sharp as possible. You need a very sturdy tripod, not uh, preferably not like a travel tripod, even though those are the most convenient. You want a very, very nice, heavy and sturdy tripod that'll hold your camera still, even though it's like windy or anything outside so that you can get those nice crisp shots and there's no like motion blur in your photos at all. This is something that people usually skip a lot. You actually need a headlamp. The headlamp is very, very, very good for navigating the dark spaces, you know, because you're out here in the dark, you're shooting the night sky. After taking a photo, you need to like get a bottle of water. You don't want to be stumbling, stumbling around, stubbing your toe on rocks, or even worse, knocking your camera, or even worse than that, knocking your friend's camera while he's shooting a photo. That's what you don't want. So you need a nice headlamp in order to navigate the dark spaces around you. Also, you also need some sort of shutter release. Luckily, my camera comes with a like a repeat trigger, like built into the camera. You can you can have a, a remote trigger or something that can trigger your camera every time you press the button. Uh, because actually, if you if you decide to press the button by yourself while you're shooting the camera, your hand actually pushes down the shutter a little bit, and that could create a little bit of motion blur that we don't want. Remember, we're looking for nice, crisp, sharp photos, so you need a shutter release in order to do this. The last thing that you need is a sky tracker app. A sky tracker app is an app that helps you track not only the moon and like you know, the moon's position in the sky, so knowing when the moon is setting, but it can help you track the core of the, mil the Milky Way core, the middle of the stars, so you know exactly where to point your camera. This will allow you to get the sharpest and best shots as possible. So a sky tracker app is very, very important. All right, now let's dive into the settings. This is what we all came here for. You guys wanna know what are the settings on the camera? I'm tired of all this stuff. Let me know these settings, Carl, what's up? I think these are the settings that I use to start off when I just wanna take a test shot right here 25 second shutter 2.8 aperture and 2000 ISO now you want to keep your shutter speed as low as possible because actually the stars are actually moving across the light sky so if you if you have like a two minute photo or a photo that's that's longer than about 25 or 30 seconds you're gonna start seeing streaks in the night sky you know so you want to keep your your shutter speed as low as possible I found that 25 25 seconds is a good place to start if you're shooting with a camera with a focal length about from around like 16 to 35 25 seconds is a good place to start now I chose 2.8 aperture because I, most people's lenses their aperture is around 2.8 if you have a lens that goes higher maybe like 1.8 or even 1.4 that would be that would be even more appropriate so you want to get your you want to keep your shutter speed around 20 to 30 seconds you want to keep your aperture as low as possible anything as low as you can go 1.4 that's good too well and you also want to keep your eyes so as low as possible. Now I chose 2000 because that's that's a good starting point. Notice that all these all these figures you have to balance them. You know, if you have if you have 20 second at 20 second exposure and 2.8 aperture and you find that your photo is still bright, then you can bring down your ISO in order to balance everything. This is obviously the exposure triangle. This is the basics of photography. You want to make sure again that your shutter speed is as low as possible. Your aperture is as low as possible and your ISO stays as low as possible. Everything has to be as low as possible because you know the higher the shutter speed the more motion blur you get the higher the aperture the harder it is for you to see the details in the photo or the harder it is for you to get it as bright as possible and the higher the iso the more noise and the more grain you get in the photo that is not that's not really what you want remember you want those crispy nice sizzling you know star shots so you want to keep everything as low as possible okay and that's it those are all my pointers i hope i've been able to help at all I'm super excited to see what you guys make with this. Please tag me on Instagram in your photos if you're able to take some night, uh, some night sky photographs. If you have any questions, any questions at all, leave them down in the comments below and I'll hopefully be able to answer every single one of you guys, giving you guys pointers on how I go about my creating process. I'm gonna try and do this a little more regularly because I, 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 lo I love like teaching and I love giving you pointers on how I do this creating thing. So. Thank you so much for watching. Oh, oh, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell. That way you're notified anytime I release another video. I'm going to keep these videos coming as much as possible. I'll see you soon. Peace.